Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Praetorian, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron Fours. We are playing with the Kaiserite mod as the Russian Republic. All right, so uh, CK3 comes out today, and uh, really excited to uh, uh, start that series. I remember that's going to be coming out sometime in uh, the morning or maybe the early afternoon, uh, depending if I, I can get up in time to, for the embargo, because the embargo is in the early early morning. I don't typically get up till the afternoon, as you guys know. I, I work night shifts, so. I usually don't get up to about noon, uh, 12, maybe 1 o'clock, uh, since, you know, I sleep. Typically, I go to sleep around uh, somewhere between 6 and 8 in the morning. So, uh, I think the embargo lifts at 10 in the morning, so it's kind of at a bad time for me. So, I'm going to see if I can't uh, either stay up until 10 and, and put it up, or, or I don't know, go to bed a little bit early and, uh, and get up early. Or it'll be out in the early afternoon. Uh, so, I do hope to see you on that series. I'm really excited to, to start that. Uh, and since I'll be recording that... Uh, a little bit later this evening. I uh, don't have a whole lot of time to, to do this video, so it's going to be a little bit shorter because uh, I'm trying to do some extra CK3 content. We'll see if I'll have the, the time or not. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started in today's episode since it will be shorter. Uh, so, oh, actually, you know, first thing we need to do is, is change up our division designs a little bit, though maybe we should wait until we get the equipment. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to do those tanks yet. Uh, let's just wait. Uh, so, this episode is going to be largely an episode of peace, as I talked about at the end of the previous video. Uh, the fate of Central Asia. What's going on with this here? Oh, okay. That's right. Somebody told me about this. So, instead of having events firing, like Kaiserreich has always had, where you have the event fire once you take over new territory, and if it's not core territory, then it costs political power in order to keep that territory, uh, or else you can you can puppet. Uh, instead, they have these decisions where you only have a certain amount of days to, to take it. Uh, or the event will just fire on its own. Although it looks like, okay, so what happens is if you don't fire this, then you don't get the event, and it just automatically assumes that uh, you're going to keep it, in which case you lose 150 political power, 15% uh, stability, and 15% war support. So that's why I had asked whether we should puppet some territory, because uh, annexing everything in Kaiserreich is just not an option. Uh, you just won't, first of all, you'll, you'll not have enough political power, and then now it affects stability and war support, so that's going to make it even worse. So essentially, you can't just you can't just annex everything in this, in this mod. Uh, but this should hopefully be considered core territory. Uh, I'm not sh exactly sure how this works. Somebody told me, that because it was previous territory that we'll we'll be able to get a core on it but i don't know if that's if we take the, the decision or, or how it works so we're just gonna go ahead and take it and see what options we have i'm really hoping we have the option to, to core it somehow and keep it uh so uh our options are establish a central asian federation which is to bring back that puppet country that we already had uh, partition it in two states which is kazakhstan and Turkestan. divide central asia into minor states okay so we'll divide it into a bunch of little little countries. We can re reintegrate Central Asia since it was formerly ours uh, and that's gonna gain us looks like we had a claim on it and then we'll have a uh, we'll, we'll have 80 political power taken from us uh, and then there's the regular military occupation is the only answer which is just annexing it. Huh. Okay I guess we'll do this one reintegrate Central Asia uh, and it gives us a claim. I don't know if that's going to give us a core a bit later, but that's what we'll do. It's obviously a better option. So let's go and take that. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to try and keep this. Now, we could have freed up Turkestan, uh, but I think we're going to try and keep all of our former Russian territory if we can. And there was no option to reintegrate just the north here and then keep uh, Turkestan as a, as a puppet. So there was no option for that anyways. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to try and keep all the, the Russian... Uh, territory. Now uh, you notice I did change up our armies a bit. Uh, we just got radio detection, uh, so we'll be able to build some radar stations. Uh, we'll do that soon. Uh, so I think we're gonna go and start working on the air doctrines now, guys. Let me just make sure we got army doctrines going. We do. All right, so let's go and work on the air doctrines, and we're gonna do battlefield support, and it's gonna be 164 days to get this. Let's increase our fighter detection. Uh, but yeah, this episode is going to be largely one of peace. Uh, we're going to, you know, there's nobody to attack right now. World tension's not high enough to get our own war goals, and we have no war goals. So there's nobody to attack. So it's just going to be, and we can go up to speed five, actually. It's just going to be a, a period of peace uh, as we get prepared for the war against the Germans or until, you know, we get another war goal to attack somebody. Uh, so I did change up the armies, and uh, we're not quite how we want this, but we're getting close close to it. Uh, it looks like Kornilov dies. 
Oh no. So he is one of our field marshals. That's a real shame. Yeah, it's a bummer. Okay, I don't know that he was. Yeah, he actually was the field marshal that we had here. Uh, okay. Well, we're not gonna appoint. We're not appointing generals and all that stuff just yet. Uh, again, we're not at war yet, so it's just it's not important. We'll deal deal with it later. Uh, so yeah, this isn't exactly how this is gonna look, uh, but it's it's close to how we're gonna want it. Uh, so we did get the national focus completed, which grant us some stability, and uh, will now let us go after Legacy of the Whites. Which is more army experience. Okay, uh, and then of course that'll let us get some nice uh, bonuses down here. However, I really think we should start working on the research bonuses uh, since we're, we're about to get to 1939 and 1940, which is gonna unlock a ton of text that we're gonna wanna get. And so I really think we should start working on uh, getting those research bonuses. So this is for the armor tech. Uh, I think the armor unlocks in 1939, right? Let me just double check on that. But I wanna say that it's 1939, yeah, they didn't change most of the dates here uh, for the text. Uh, but you never know when you're playing a mod, what they change. So we are gonna wanna get the armor technology so we can research the next uh, armor, uh, specifically the medium ones. But we also wanna get the infantry weapons one. Uh, so I think that's what we're gonna get next. Yeah, we're gonna go for that one first. Uh, so let's go to grab that. And uh, that'll give us research bonuses that we'll be able to use for the 1939 infantry equipment text. Uh, and Romanov dies as well. Oh no, uh, so his son Vladimir is in his early 20s and may be an excellent and pliable figurehead as czar. Perhaps now is the time to restore the monarchy. Uh, so we do have the option to restore the monarchy now if we so desired, uh, but we're not gonna do that. Uh, that'll result in us getting stability, uh, Russian Republic comes the Russian Empire. Okay, uh, so what would that happen with your focus tree? Would that mess you all up? I mean, maybe it wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, because you have to have one of these two as a leader. Uh, so yeah, you'd be kinda, you'd be stuck. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to go any further and you wouldn't be able to go anywhere else either because you didn't do the Restore the Monarchy, so that'd be terrible, absolutely terrible. Although, no, no, yeah, you can't have this because we have this one, so yeah. You wouldn't wanna go that route anyways. I'm not that we were gonna do it, uh, but it does result in us losing more stability. I'll tell you what, as a Russian man, stability is incredibly difficult to keep keep up uh, it's just uh, and, and I'm not complaining you know it's it's part of the, the mechanics and maybe it should be like that just noting the fact that it is uh, quite difficult for us to keep our stability up uh, we have a lot of trouble with it it's like always down and every time I invest in it it's uh, we just lose it right away uh, so what do you want to go for next uh, we got air doctrines going now uh, we could go with the next radar tech we do need to get those radars starting to build it's not close enough to 1939 yet yeah, so let's just go ahead and get the radar tech we know we're going to want to get that eventually. All right, so uh, I also got to set up to build another synthetic refinery for some more rubber. Did we get all of those techs? Let me just take a look at that real quick before we get this here. Uh, see if we... Yeah, we did. We got all the rubber ones. Okay. Uh, and we're, we're okay on oil for right now. All right, so let's go to build those radar out just along the, the front line here. Uh, radar has a lot of benefits, so uh, let's see how we want to do this. You know what, I think we might wait until we get the second radar uh, so that I can kind of figure out like how how wide apart that we want these. And you know, we have a lot of other stuff that we can build that we need. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, let's go and get more military factories. Uh, we could also go ahead and get a couple more dockyards. You know what, let's get a couple dockyards uh, just to get the, uh, uh, the submarines building. Uh, and probably just one actually, just one more dockyard I think would be would be good. Uh, so we're going to get that, and uh, then we're also going to go ahead and do the uh, military factories. That's that's what we need, guys. More military factories. Uh, always in a in a need for that. All right, so let's go ahead and, and focus on the 50% locations. All right, excellent. Maybe running right there as well. Okay, so I'll let us uh, continue getting those military factories up because right now the main problem is the equipment, guys. Uh, we are just uh, short on on many types of equipment. One thing we could do. All right, so it looks like one of those wars in Africa is done. We'll go take a look at the African situation here in a minute. Uh, one of the things we could do is go ahead and add that self-propelled artillery. That would get rid of this missing equipment production. No, it would get rid of the no-template one. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll give the uh, light self-propelled artillery here. And I almost want to go to 40 width, but we just don't have the equipment right now to, to justify doing that. Uh, let's see if there's anything we can do here. Could do the uh, support artillery, give them a little bit more... Uh, abilities here. We can also go over the maintenance companies. That's a decent option as well. Let's go with the maintenance companies here. 
We might go logistics too. There are some supply issues in this area. You know, we'll go logistics instead of the uh, uh, support artillery. Uh, so that looks good. Although we don't have uh, any anti-tank or anything like that in here. So that's a problem. Yeah, you know what? Let's not do uh, the logistics for right now. Yeah, we'll just do uh, either anti-air or the uh, anti-tanks. Uh, for these guys. We won't do it just yet though. We're just gonna make that adjustment and those will start uh, going out to to our troops. Uh, manpower is a serious issue guys. Uh, it's it's pretty low right now and um, looks like Haiti did end up winning here as we, we expected them to. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the manpower is really short and we can't really change the, the manpower laws up because we don't have any political power yet. Uh, so somebody asked about Nigeria. Uh, if they were in a war, they, they won it, because uh, they're out, uh, they're in peace now. Also a war here between the Ivory Coast and Ashanti. Just looking at other conflicts that are going on, you have a little bit of conflict here it looks like. I'm just seeing who else is all at war, so we don't have the rearmament program no more, I don't know what that was, was granting us. Is that all the wars here? No, we have another war here. Okay, between three separate countries. So I have to see how things go here. Uh, but yeah, it does look like most of the wars in Africa are starting to end at this point. Uh, so we got the magnetic detonators, and that's going to improve the abilities of our uh, of our submarines, or really anybody using uh, torpedoes. Uh, we could go ahead and, and really justify getting some some naval techs, just some basics here, just so we can have a, a very basic surface fleet. Uh, but we are approaching 1939, so let's go and work on the 1939 text, guys. I feel like that's what we need the most of right now. And we're going to go ahead and start with the industrial text, as as we typically do. Uh, we'll go ahead and go with the uh, Concentrated Industry 3. I typically wait until December to go for it uh, for the 1939 text, but you know what? I feel like this is, uh, this is soon enough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get it. So we have all of our troops here training. Also have some troops here. That's this this one army. We could send these guys off volunteers. I feel like I think think this is the time to just be at peace for a little while, guys, and just kind of fix up our uh, equipment issues. So we will not send volunteers out. We'll keep a little army here uh, just in case. But I'm going to send some of these guys out uh, to one of these armies that aren't full, and probably the one that we're going to prioritize is the one that hasn't got the entire line defended. Yeah, you can see that we have many openings along this line. So that's where we're gonna send these guys. Uh, let's go ahead and send them onto this front. And we'll get just a few infantry divisions going down there. Uh, is that gonna get us up to 30? That will get us up to 30 there, which we'll use that commander who, who can have 30 divisions. But this will probably have to be split into two separate armies because it's just, uh, I think it's too wide for one army uh, to cover, even with 30 divisions. So more than likely, we'll have to have this into two separate separate armies. Uh, looking along this front to see if this is fully defended. Looks like just barely. Uh, we do have a couple extra divisions down there in the south. We could move some of these up here, but again, I, I feel like... Uh, yeah, we will have to increase the, the armies, create two separate armies here. It's just it's too large of a front, frankly. Uh, so there was also a war down in South Africa that I didn't, that I didn't look at. Looks like the Union of South Africa was the one to win that. They are no longer in any conflicts, though. Uh, they are in the Entente as well. So they are allied with Portugal here, but they could advance into this territory if they if they wanted to. Uh, ooh, Brazil has just joined the German faction. Okay. Again, the German faction just continues to increase in size. Uh, and following a close encounter with German counterintelligence, one of our uh, agents was injured. Okay. So I imagine that means you can't use them for a little while. Yeah, you can't use them for, I don't know how much time it is, 87 days. All right, uh, well, we do have that mission going, or actually it looks like we completed it. Uh, so we have rescued a captured operative. Uh, the team has so far failed to make contact during the prearranged schedule. We have no further information on what happened to them. So did we lose a guy? That's what it seems like. Yeah, it seems like we lost, lost our guy. All right, uh, so we still got that guy on counter intel. And we still have two dudes here. I think we're gonna wait until we get that that uh, this guy back here, or get the. Uh, I think we should be getting another one here soon. Maybe not. I thought we had five, uh, but apparently not. 
I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, because I thought we had five operatives, but I guess we only have four. I don't know how we lost one. Yeah, because even if we lost one, like, he died. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I think the guy who was in prison died. Then we should, you know, after 30 days, be able to get it. I keep on clicking on that instead of this one. Should be able to get uh, another operative. All right. Maybe that uh, National Spirit we lost. I don't know if that one was increasing our amount of operatives, but yeah, kind of strange. Uh, so we did get the research bonus for the infantry equipment. Excellent. Uh, so let's go and see what we want to get next. Uh, we could go after the mechanized equipment. Uh, that'd be useful. That's a you know, research bonus for that. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have research bonus for the computing technology. Okay. Uh, this one will also give us some very nice bonuses. Uh, with Intel network strength gain factors increased. Uh, resistance growth is decreased. And most importantly, we get more political power, which has been a major major issue for us. Uh, so yeah, I think we're gonna go for that one next. And it also gives us a nice research bonus. Uh, we did get that dockyard done uh, building. Uh, let's go ahead and put into submarines now. Uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna go ahead and start with the submarines now. I don't know. Yeah, I, I hate that you can't really tell um, like which one's the most recent ones. Uh, I mean, I imagine it's the improved ones, but I like when they have the numbers, so I can easily see, oh, two is, is better than one. This is what we'll do. We're going to take a look at it to make sure. Uh, I, I feel pretty confident improved is the right one, but yeah, I just want to look at this. So it's, you know, Vilt Creek Submarine Hole, Improved, Advanced, and then Modern. Okay, uh, so let's go and get the improved one starting to build. Let's take a look at the design, see if it needs any adjustments. It does. Uh, so let's go and get these and... Let's go ahead and put another torpedo tube in there. Uh, and we'll have the, oh, there are no historical Navy name, uh, ship names. So how's it, hmm, I wonder how it names them. Yeah, I don't, I don't exactly know how it names them. Uh, but what we can do is go ahead and name the, whoa. Uh, is name the design here. And we're just gonna say attack subs, just our typical one, guys. Uh, attack subs 2-A. Are fantastic. Save that and then let's decommission these ones. And... Hmm. Alright, so let's go and decommission all these here. What's the large submarine hole? Oh, okay. Interesting. So... This allows you to, right from the get-go here, create much better submarines. I wonder what the difference is. Huh. Let, let's go and see if we can't compare these two uh, with the improved submarine holes with, like, nothing on them. And see if there's any other differences. Like, is there any reason not to use the large submarine hole? All right, so I, I looked at these two and, and compared them, and the only real advantage of the smaller submarines is that they, uh... I mean, there's really not a whole lot of advantages uh, uh, when you compare them. Uh, but there is the speed, the max speed. That's That's it, I think. I think that's the only advantage of the, the smaller subs is that they are faster. A uh, large one, you know, obviously is you know a lot slower, but it has better range, better HP. Uh, I think reliability is actually slightly bigger, uh, better. I think it's 75 to 70. Yep. So even reliability is a little bit higher. Uh, obviously, there's going to be the difference with uh, uh, you know the fact that we have more more parts here. But yeah, there's no other really. Uh, any, any negatives? I guess there's this. I didn't look at this here to see if the, there's differences there, which there might be, uh, but uh, probably not. Uh, so, and even if there is, I, I don't think that it would make up for uh, the benefits that we get with this one because we have the extra uh, parts here. So I think we're going to use this one, guys. I think this is uh, for the best here is to use this. Uh, so let's go ahead and place uh, our stuff here. Uh, we can also put aircraft facilities here so that you can uh, increase your detection uh, by quite a bit. Uh, so that would be helpful, but I don't know that we'll do that. Uh, let, let's take a look and see how, how it looks. Uh, now, I guess we can't put anything there right now, so that's one negative. I think we're just going to do the torpedo tubes and have the higher torpedo attack. Uh, I think that's that would be better for us. Uh, now, I know that being able to uh, detect would be, obviously would be really nice too, but you know what? I think we're going to do it with the uh, very, very high torpedo attack, so we're just going to just wreak havoc. So let's go and save that. I just, I just don't typically have trouble locating convoys. Uh, usually, it's that's not typically the problem. Uh, so we didn't name them though. So let's go ahead and do that real quick, and we'll name them the attack subs. Okay. All right. I was going to rename that, and then we'll keep these guys in here. But we're not going to build them. Obviously, that's another thing. Is the production's a lot higher, so you're going to build them a lot slower. So that's that's something to consider, but. 
I feel like this is the best one to go with. That torpedo attack is gonna be just so much higher. And then plus it has the, the better range too, so that's another advantage. Uh, let's go ahead and have him build in Petrograd, or what was former Leningrad. Although I don't know if the name was ever changed uh, in this world, if they ever changed it. Yeah, they might not have uh, changed it because of, you know, what happened in the, the Civil War. All right, so uh, these guys are done. Our mountain troops are done. Uh, so we go ahead and place them into an army. Now, there's not really mountains up along this front at all, but there are mountains down here. So what I think we would do is put them into this army and then just pull uh, a couple of the troops off of here and we can go ahead and train that tank up. What we do need to do is just have a tank army. Uh, yeah, I think we'd want to have a tank army, but we'll, we'll wait to do that. For, for now, let's go ahead and pull these guys off and just put them onto another front. I guess we'll put like one over here and then uh, one over here. Let's try and get those numbers up. Although this says it has seven divisions in it. Huh. Seven divisions, really. Uh, do we need to have this doubled up? All right, yeah, I guess that's fine. It's kind of strange. Did I move? It looks like I might have moved some troops or something. I'm not entirely sure what I did there, but clearly I didn't do what I wanted to do. Let's change that up a little bit. Uh, so we did finish up uh, the research of the naval bombers. All right, so we'll have to get those building. So we are in 1939. Let's go ahead and get the 1939 tax guys uh, so we can get the infantry equipment so we start building that. And I, I think that's what we're going to get. I know I usually do the industrial tax first, but uh, we already have one research slot going towards the industrial tax. And we have this nice research bonus to get this a lot quicker, and I want to start getting it built uh, so that we'll have uh, the better infantry equipment out there. Now, of course, we could not build the better infantry equipment and then just kind of focus on getting more infantry equipment since it has lower production costs. But that is not what we're going to do. Uh, let's go ahead and put that factory down here, or put the uh, planes down here, and they'll get the next factory. Our finest hour. All right, so uh, this is a novel. Yeah, this is one of the, the novels about... Uh, I think they yeah, got alternate history novels that they, they show in this uh, this mod. There's actually one uh, event about an alternate history novel that uh, ended up resulting in an entirely new mod called uh, the Führerreich mod. It was based off of a alternate history uh, novel in Kaiserreich. So we did get the delay. That's uh, increased organization. Uh, let's go and go with the next one here, which is uh, going to give us some nice bonuses. 327 days to research that, so it's going to take a quite a while. Uh, so now that we got the next radar station, I think that we're done with the radar for right now. Let's just focus on the industrial techs, guys. And we're going to go out to the rubber processing because we're actually short on rubber right now. And I haven't been trading for it. Uh, and I think we probably should trade for some uh, for now anyway. And I don't know who to trade with. Uh, let's see here. I don't know what factions everybody's in uh, as of right now. So that's how we kind of want to base it off of. So we'll, we'll take a look and see who's in which faction so they're not in a faction at all and they're in the japanese faction so probably borneo is who we want to trade with yeah i think that is probably the uh, the best country to trade with there's also siam uh, i don't think they're in a faction yet so yeah we could trade with them as well uh, so that'd be an option uh, but borneo has more so we'll trade with them so we're trying to get a little bit of rubber there with our our factory uh, is there anything that we want to do with our division designs? I know we have the army experience, but of course, uh, the problem is, is again, just the equipment. Uh, like, I want to change up the, the tank divisions, but the, the motorized is still, you know, still short. We were a lot uh, more short than this when we first started the episode, uh, but I've put a lot of factories towards the motorized, so it has kind of helped fix that issue there. Also, the support equipment, we're, we've decreased our need by about 50%, uh, having those 15 factories towards support equipment. Uh, and world tension just keeps getting lower, man. So that's gonna be kind of hard for us to uh, to be able to uh, get any any war goals. Uh, so let's go and start with here. I'm gonna try and get it going all the way across the front. Uh, let me see how. Okay, so it looks like it just covers that one state. Uh, remember though, we will get uh, you know more radar, so we would kind of cover in this this zone here a bit. Let's just go here for right now. And yeah, we'll kind of try and spread this out some so that we're not sitting here building so much of it. All right, so that's good for right now. They'll give us a little bit of radar coverage. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
Uh, so we'll get that. So now I really wanted the one in Petrograd here because uh, that covers both the, this area, this area, and the C zone there. Uh, so we lost another leader. I don't know if that what that changes who he was or where he was working. I mean, uh, but yeah, they, a lot of people dying right now. There's older people from the uh, Civil War, and hmm, wasn't the war over here already done? Did they rebel? Well, so it looks like they already had a rebellion. That that happened quickly, didn't it? And what I'm assuming is that they didn't have the any equipment or manpower for garrisoning this, and so they they rebelled on them. Uh, very quickly because yeah they're at war so it definitely wasn't part of the the events like where they they had to free them or something like that all right so the faction here is growing uh, I'm trying to see who's all part of it okay so here's the faction and these two are allied okay interesting and they are at war with them okay so that's one of our neighbors and they're currently at war with the uh, Qing government, so this would be a great time to invade them, but again, can't really uh, take advantage of it. There's nothing we can do about it. Plus, they are probably guaranteed. Yeah, they're guaranteed by Japan, so if we were to invade them, then we could expect the Japanese to support that. Uh, so these guys are being guaranteed by Tibet, their neighbor. Uh, so if we attacked Mongolia, then we'd be at war with Tibet as well. All right, so let's go and get to the, these factories assigned here, kind of place them. You know, we're doing good on infantry equipment. Uh, again, we're trying to get this updated. So we'll keep the three factories into it uh, for when we, we change to the next equipment, which we're currently researching. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the all the factories that we get going into motorized, because we're going to need a ton of that, guys. And we're going to go ahead and change up our, our tank divisions now. What I wanted to do is change up these guys to motorized. Uh, so this is going to result in this being a lot more expensive. A lot more expensive uh, when it comes to motorized I mean uh, so yeah we need 220 uh, per unit uh, luckily we don't have any tank division so it's it's not gonna be as bad as I thought it was um, let's go and save that and uh, we'll see how bad this is now uh, motorized so yeah it's it's not too bad it could be worse uh, but that'll allow us to start building some tank divisions uh, as well which is what I really want to get but again though our manpower is so low uh, I, I suppose we'll have to change it as soon as we get 150 bullet power or 100. It costs 100 to change this. Uh, so as soon as we get 100, we'll change over to limited conscription, because uh, we're still on uh, volunteer only right now. All right, so we did get electronic uh, warfare. Uh, so that's some, again, that's some really nice bonuses. Uh, so it's good to have. Uh, let's see what we want to get next. Uh, again, I'm looking for research bonuses. Let's go ahead and start with the armor modernization. Uh, Going to get that. So we'll have those uh, research bonuses for our armor. We are getting those radar built. We get one more military factory constructed here and then we're gonna be working mostly on radar for a little bit just so we have those done because we don't know when the war with the Germans is gonna start. Uh, I don't want, you know what, it's kind of crazy that it is taking them this long to defeat these guys. What is, what is taking so long? Now yeah, they're just having a lot of trouble here because they are still at war with the Dutch and the Dutch are holding out here in this one little zone. Uh, but yeah, we don't want to start the war with Germany until they're already at war with France. Uh, that's the key here. Uh, we want them to be at war with France first. As uh, so we get the uh, formation blind, let's go and get dive bombing next. This air support mission efficiency. I suppose there's other things we could have gotten instead of that. Yeah, I guess maybe we should. Uh, what we'll do is we'll finish that up, and then after that, we'll go for some other stuff. There's there's a lot of things that need to be got, guys. Quite a few things. We'll see if any troops need to be trained. Right here we have some tank unit that needs a little bit of training. An Australasian guard coup. How unexpected! It says how expected. I, I say how unexpected because I didn't. I had no idea that was going to happen. I don't know what effect that ended up having because we didn't. I didn't read it. But I guess you could pause and read it. Let me know down in the comments what happened there. Uh, so we got the concentrated industry uh, three. Let's go ahead and get. See what we want to do next. We'll do the advanced machine tools. Gonna get that knocked out. Try and get all those industrial techs. We we research industrial techs. Fairly quickly, uh, Siam so just joined the Crow Prosperity Sphere, and somebody joined them before that, uh, or joined a faction before that, but I don't know who it was. Uh, looks like it might have been the Republic of Burma. Yeah. Uh, so the Japanese faction is growing in size here. Oh, and these guys are part of it as well. I think we knew that. Yeah, we saw that when we just looked at it. So Japan won't have to conquer much of this territory, uh, and they completely surround the German colonies here. So I think Germany and Japan will end up at war with each other. 
Uh, one thing that somebody pointed out is, or somebody that was kind of worried about is that, you know, Germany would, you know, defeat Japan and then they'll be able to invade us from the east. I just, uh, man, I just don't see that happening. I mean, I, again, I don't play Kaiserreich very often, so maybe that will happen, but I just, it just feels like Germany's got enough, like, fronts over here they have to deal with and defend. I just have trouble believing that they're going to, uh, is this going to get us some, yeah, political power, nice. Uh, I just have trouble believing that they'll be able to come over here and defeat the Japanese. Uh, and I don't know how they look n compared to their, n their navy. Uh, it's got about 200-something ships here. Uh, they have a larger navy, but remember, their navy has to be both uh, here in the, you know, Atlantic and the Mediterranean and the North Sea, uh, while the Japanese just have to be here in the Pacific. So I imagine the Japanese will outnumber them. Uh, Ethiopia and Somalia are now at war, uh, so more conflict in Africa. I don't know how this is going. It looks like uh, Mozambique is, is losing. They're not doing well there. Are these two at war? No, they are not. They're just both at war with Mozambique. All right, so we got our infantry equipment done. Excellent. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start building that. Uh, we will... Yeah, we won't research those because uh, obviously it's not not time yet. We have a research bonus that we can get, I think, for mountain infantry, so we won't get that yet. And there's so many other things to get. Uh, we don't have the, the tank... Uh, we don't have the tank thing here yet, D design company, which is a shame, uh, because uh, I'd really like to research those medium tanks, but I want to make sure we have the design company for it, so we'll have to wait on that. We could get the artillery, uh, that would be helpful. Maybe that's what we're going to get next. Uh, let me just take a look and see what all our options are. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do next. Uh, let's go and get the, the artillery, so we can get that building. And we will want to go ahead and update the infantry equipment. Alright, fantastic. Go ahead and try and get that updated. Get some of our equipment updated. Uh, we have a nice stockpile of infantry equipment. Uh, we could... Well, we still have the, the support equipment shortages. And what I really want to build is tanks. Uh, and I think we could go ahead and start building tanks. You know what? Let's do it. Let's, let's get some light tanks, guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and train some of these up. I know that they're going to be lacking some equipment. And I know that we are short on manpower, but we're about to change that now. So that's not a big problem. Uh, let's just go ahead and get five light tank divisions. Now... I know that some people don't like like don't like light tanks. I like them. Um, their, their speed is amazing. It's uh, super super helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and go after the construction now. Yeah, but I find their their speed to be really useful. Uh, so let's go ahead and get. Uh, I'm really tempted to see what these are. I know one of them is about the stability, but what's the other one about? Let's just take a look real quick. Uh, I mean, I know we we have to go for the manpower, uh, but let's just see. Okay, so this one is about increasing our party popularity. We can do that. I just, I just forgot. Uh, so let's go to go with the uh, limited conscription. Get a little bit of manpower here, guys, because you can see that we are quite short. Uh, we've ran out of all of our manpower, so that should be increasing. Uh, and then we'll. Uh, I know that our war support is kind of low, so it'll increase uh, slow. And Ireland has a conflict here. They're going after Northern Ireland, Ulster. Okay, but she's not in British hands. I don't know if they, uh, was it always like that? Maybe they, um, rebelled when, when Britain went, went left? I don't know. Uh, so that war is done down here along the east coast of Africa, and it's like they took all of Mozambique. Oh, wait, nope, they've already freed them. Okay, so they're back again. I assume they're a puppet. Yeah, uh, so they are a puppet. Couldn't hold that territory, and that's why the AI releases them. Uh, the Ottomans here... Are definitely losing. Uh, they're definitely going to lose this conflict. Uh, somebody in the comments wanted me to uh, to help them, uh, but I don't think that makes a lot of sense for for Russia. Russia and, and the Ottoman Empire were uh, definitely rivals uh, for a long, long time. Uh, they did not like each other. They're consistently fighting each other, so it just doesn't make a lot of sense that we would support them. Uh, and it's also in our better interest if this territory is all divided up too. Uh, so we got the armor modernization. Uh, let's see what we want to go for next. I don't think we're going to get either of these just yet. Though the armor research time, plus 10%, that would actually be really helpful when we do start researching armor. Uh, we won't start doing that until after I get the tank designers to make sure that this applies to the uh, the tanks that we get. So we'll need 150 political power before we're able to start researching those. Uh, so that's going to take us some time to get to. We are going to want the research bonus for them, though. And I think that's what we're going to go ahead and do is get that. And it gives us some nice bonuses for armor. That max speed is going to be incredibly helpful. Uh, so let's go, to, let's go and get that, guys. I really, again, I want to focus on research bonuses. 
I think that that's uh, what we need to need to get because we have so many things we're trying to get at the same time right now. So having uh, uh, you know, be able to get those those texts quicker, I think, is super helpful. Uh, so looking at radar coverage, this is how it looks right now. The front is for the most part uh, done. We we do have uh, some problems here. Uh, there'll be a little bit of a gap there, but that's okay. That'll get fixed as we get better radar. Uh, we could do it up here as well. I don't think we even have any planes up there, uh, or excuse me, any air bases up there, so we won't. I think this is probably good for right now. I think we should really, again, focus on getting the, uh, the military factories. Uh, so that, that's just what we need. That's what we consistently need is military factories. Uh, we can only do one there. Uh, we are up on the manpower now. And Venezuela elects a syndicalist government. Remember, Brazil is in the German faction, so we're going to see the, the German-French war is going to uh, continue in the, this, or is going to happen in South America as well. Uh, it's going to be all over the world, uh, probably. Although I guess France doesn't really have any colonies. Uh, but you know, Germany's going to be fighting Japan here in Asia. I guess it's not going to be here in Africa either, since Germany lost out of the territory. So let me take that back. It'll be Europe, Asia, and South America. That's where the conflict will be. And then with the United States, we just don't know what they'll do. I assume they'll join the Entente, uh, but can't say for sure. They could also try and stay uh, neutral. I guess that's always an option. So we did get the artillery. Uh, let's go ahead and figure out what we want to get next. I guess anti-tanks. We know we're going to want those. Uh, is there anything that we, we need to get right now that we don't have to worry about, like research bonuses? Oh, yeah. Support equipment. We definitely want to get that, too. All right. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go get the anti-tanks, and then we'll do the... Uh, support equipment unless there's something else that pops up that I realize I need uh, let's get the artillery out there get better better guns uh, we'll take a look at the equipment see if we can make any adjustments uh, if we've yeah we're still really short on the uh, support equipment so not yet the tanks are also quite short too uh, now that we're building those uh, so we'll have to get more there well we're getting uh, we're getting more military factories to do that I'm making good progress this episode so that's that's really good, so that's, that's kind of the key here. Uh, so, of course, Ireland did conquer the north, as you'd expect them to. Uh, but, yeah, the key is, uh, is of course, trying to get, uh, you know, trying to get as far as we can, get, get as close to the, the conflict. Uh, so, another uprising here. I'm not entirely sure what's been happening over here. Uh, but, yeah, it seems like they're having some stability issues there. Okay, uh, and again, world tensions still pretty far down. It's at uh, 44%, and, and the damn clergy, man. Basically, it seems like what you get from not supporting the clergy is you're trading stability for political power. Uh, the problem with that is that you have to use your political power for those decisions to get stability, so um, I don't know. I, I don't know what would have happened if we would have uh, gone with the church, uh, if we had supported them and... Uh, what I would assume would happen is that we would be gaining stability but losing political power. You'd think it'd be the opposite, but I don't know. And I don't know if that would have been been better. I assume it would be, because remember, stability does help you earn political power. So yeah, it feels like that'd probably be the better option. I kind of regret doing it now. Uh, we can't do these, but we don't want to. Uh, remember, we want to we want to get this tank uh, designer so we can start researching the tanks, get better tanks out there, get medium tanks. Uh, we're going to have a very... Uh, very tank-focused campaign. Probably not initially. On the initial defense, you know, we're going to have to rely on infantry. Uh, we, we need a lot of troops right now, too. Uh, we do not have anywhere near enough units. Uh, let's go ahead and start building some more uh, infantry, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, do we have... No, we don't have anything we want to give them here just yet. We either want to do anti-air or anti-tanks here. We do have anti-air. We even built some anti-air. Uh, but is that what we want to do? Uh, I don't know how our Air Force is going to do. Uh, I think we should go ahead and do that, though. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's, we'll pick a, a focus real quick, and then we're going to do that. Uh, so what do we want to get next? All right, we've got that. I suppose we'll go after the plane ones next. Uh, any research bonuses for the planes? And uh, there's a doctrine bonus there. Uh, but... After we get the tank designer, we'll go after the uh, plane designer, and so then we'll research those 1940 planes, which we're getting kind of close to. So, yeah, we'll go and do that uh, so that we'll have that, make sure we have that in time uh, for when we want it. Uh, so, yeah, still have this popping up here. Oh, yes, that's right. I was going to uh, change up these divisions and go ahead and give them the anti-air. Uh, I could give them the anti-tank, but I think we're just going to do anti-air, guys. Uh, it does give a little bit of a uh, heart attack. You know, increases heart attack a bit. Uh, just a little bit. A little bit of piercing as well. Uh, obviously not quite as good as anti-tanks, but 
uh, is going to help us in the air, which I would really like to do okay in the air. If we can, I think we'll be vastly outnumbered, though, so it's really hard to say. Uh, uh, speaking of the air, uh, what we could do here is get these increased, these fighters increased up to 200. I'm sure we have a stockpile of fighters. We have a little bit of a stockpile. Okay, so let's go ahead and take both of these air wings and increase them up by 100. And we might want to also take a look, and we'll have these guys training. I might need to uh, set him up again. There we go. Uh, let's go and take a look and see how many close air support we have. We have enough to go ahead and start training them. We're not building them very quick. Uh, really, the Air Force just not putting the factories into them because I'm trying to get our army built out. I feel like it's imperative that we get the army uh, strengthened up some. The anti-air is really short. I thought we were building anti-air, apparently not. Huh, okay, yeah, I guess we're not building anti-air. And what I'm gonna do here is so this alert will go away because that's what's uh, that's gonna mess me up. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just put these down to 45 here. In fact, let's just go to, to 40, uh, just so when they take any other losses, they'll have some planes to replace them with. I'm not gonna build those though, not right now. Obviously we have a lot of other stuff that we've gotta build. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the anti-air building underneath the, the artillery here. And we'll place that up there. All right, so that looks good. And we'll get a couple factories going towards it. Okay. Just uh, don't have the military factories that we need. Uh, we just got to keep building them. And the United States did join the Entente. All right, so we have uh, four powerful factions in the world right now. We have the Entente, uh, which is, you know, France, uh, Canada, the United States, uh, South Africa and the Australasian Confederation. Oh, and the Dominion of India. Uh, and then, of course, we have Japan's faction, which is getting pretty powerful. And then we have the the French-British faction, which you know has Metsco here and Chile and uh, the Federated Syndicates of uh, Bolivia. And then we have the German faction, of course. So four powerful factions in the world, and then we have us, which I'm not including us in that. I guess I should. So five five powerful factions uh, in the world. So I think we are done here, aren't we? With the 1939 text? Yeah, because we're good, on, good enough on fuel. I'm not going to bother with any of this just yet. I know that we'll need more for the war, but we'll deal with that then. Uh, yeah, and I think we're good enough here as well. Can we get the... Uh, no, we haven't got the 150, so we can't get that yet. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the support companies, and we will get the field hospital twos. And we have a decision. Yeah, we have those two decisions available. So we'll just have to... Uh, from, just stop clicking on that until we get that 150 uh, political power here. Uh, so let's just take a look at see what Germany's working on. I don't know what this is, uh, but again, I'm, I'm really uh, wanting to, to know when they're going to to go to war with us here. All right, so that's going to bring Finland in to the faction. Yeah, it just sucks that we can't declare war on anybody, man. Oh, they're already in the, the faction. Okay. Um, but yeah, it just sucks that we can't can't declare war on anybody. Like, I'd really like to declare war on Mongolia, but yeah, it's just not an option. Uh, it's a bummer there's nothing in the focus tree for that, or at least not yet. Uh, yeah. Hmm. There's Japan. I thought one of these would give us one for the... Uh... Yeah, I guess there's nothing for attacking Mongolia. That's strange. You really should be able to attack them. So yeah, we just have to wait until the, the world tension gets high enough, but it's just not... Uh... Just not happening. Uh, so we did get the construction. Uh, let's go and get the excavation, and we can also get some, probably some more military factories building. That's what we should get. Uh, we could use more civilian factories though as well. Uh, so we can have a fourth line building. You know what? Let's build a couple more civilian factories, guys. Just a few. Uh, just get a couple more going, and we'll put them up along the front here, where we might end up losing territory. So like another four civilian factories is what I'm thinking. Cause yeah, we don't even have the full three lines now because we're trading for that that rubber. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and do the, the four more here. Let's actually do a fifth one uh, right there. And then we'll get military factories after that. All right, excellent. Uh, so I should keep them uh, busy for a while. Let's see if we still need to trade for rubber. We do, unfortunately. All right, so uh, the Cairo Pact is growing as well, uh, and maybe I should consider them as a powerful faction too, because they've, you know, now that they conquered the Ottomans, they actually have quite a bit of territory now, and you can see that it's it's growing. The faction is growing. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we should consider them uh, a powerful faction. I don't know. Um, I guess the, this territory do doesn't have a lot of factories, so. If they continue to grow, though, 
Uh, so we do have the 150 pillar of power, so we already know what we're getting. We're getting the tank designer, though I don't know which one we're getting. Let's just take a look and see uh, the differences. So they're all 10% research time. Uh, the armor uh, here will gain heart attack and armor, so that's helpful. Soft attack and reliability. Okay, I'll probably want to go with the heart attack and armor because we're not going to build heavy tanks more than likely, so having the heart attack would be helpful, as would the armor, uh, much more so than the soft attack and reliability. Uh, max speed and defense, though. You guys know I like speed, man. Uh, I might have to go for that. Uh, production costs would be helpful as well because we would build a lot quicker. Uh, though, of course, that's more of a mid-game uh, tech, you know, or excuse me, a mid-game design company. In the late game, you, know, you typically don't have issues with uh, equipment. But it would help us out initially. But I think we're going to go with uh, either the heart attack and armor or the max speed and defense. We already have a lot of max speed bonuses. And one thing we have to consider the fact is that mechanized is not getting uh, max speed bonuses, uh, the same max speed bonuses. So I think that they're going to end up slowing down the medium tanks and the motorized will slow down the light tanks. And so it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to keep getting these max speed bonuses when we already have some, some of them. Uh, so I think we should probably go with the heart attack and armor in this particular case. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do this. Uh, so let's go and go for this. Uh, I think it'll be helpful again because we're not getting heavy tanks and the Germans probably will. Uh, I assume that they'll have heavy tanks. Uh, so we can use tank destroyers, of course, to kind of offset that, but uh, making our tanks better would, would be useful. So Two Sicilies is in fact losing here. Uh, and I'm actually okay with Italy going over to the left. Uh, and this is why I kind of want Spain, I wanted Spain to, to not be on the left, uh, is because you know, now you you have the situation. Okay, interesting. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, we have the situation where we have Italy, France, and uh, Britain that are all at war with Germany, uh, and you know, you know when they go to war. And so, if you have Spain in addition to that, I think Germany would be screwed because then they have us invading from this side, and you got this this huge front, and they still have to defend this front as well because that's a different faction. So uh, they're also fight would be fighting in Asia. So. I really feel like Germany would, would collapse uh, quite quickly. Uh, so that's that's the reason why I wanted to kind of help uh, make sure that didn't happen, that we didn't have too sh too powerful of a left here uh, by having Spain over here. This will require France to have to worry about that front. Uh, but here, this is the important, important event here. French Republic declared we're on the Commune of France. So that means that the Third International is going to be at war soon with the Entente. Uh, so I don't I don't know how this is going to go down, guys. We'll have to watch and see. Uh, but I assume there's going to be invasions across here since they don't have a border. Uh, so yeah, their only choice is to invade across here. So it's really about who controls the Mediterranean. That's how this is going to be uh, determined. Which I assume... You know, I don't really know. I was going to say I would assume that the, uh, the Third International would be able to do it. But I did forget that the Entente has the Americans. You know what, guys? I don't know. This naval battle could go anywhere, but basically, whoever wins the naval battle is the one that's going to be able to do the invasions across here. Because uh, yeah, this is there's no borders, uh, the land, there's no land borders. Uh, so yeah, this is going to very much be a naval conflict with invasions. It'll be interesting to see what we'll the follow along it. Well, let me take that back. Uh, there is a land border here, guys, uh, with Mexico and the United States. So. That means the United States is going to be focused on that rather than helping out here. So it'll be interesting to watch uh, how this war between the Entente and the Third International go. Uh, I, I couldn't even say. I don't know who's going to win it. Uh, but I do expect that now we'll likely soon see war. Because uh, you see demand Alsace-Lorraine here. I think we'll soon see war between uh, the left and, and the Germans. And, and, and that's one thing to consider is that because the Third International is war, at war with the Entente, they will be distracted with that. And so that could cause them issues here in the war with Germany. Uh, but we do have the ability to start war with Germany at any time uh, because we do have the decision here to, uh, you know, try and go to war with them uh, through, where the hell is that decision? It's up here, the question of the Don Cuban Union. Uh, so we can always take that as only 20 political power and that will likely start the conflict. So there's nothing really stopping us from being able to start the conflict when we want to. Uh, so... It's, uh, maybe as soon as Germany declares war, uh, we'll wait a little bit of time just for the troops to get moved off of the border here as they go focus on over there. Because you, you can see we're vastly outnumbered on this front. Uh, yeah, they definitely outnumber us here. And they can't even really pull many divisions from the east. Uh, there's not a lot over there right now. 14 divisions. Uh, there's five here. But overall, uh, yeah, we don't have the uh, we don't have the division numbers. Let's go and get all these guys training up. Anybody who I might have neglected here. Uh, but this is unfortunately going to be the end of the episode guys uh, I don't think these guys need to train 
Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Uh, go check out that CK3 series if you like if you like Crusader Kings. Go check that series out. Uh, should be fun. Uh, and I will see you guys on the next episode of this, which remember won't be until Thursday. Thursday will be the next video. So I'll see you then, and thanks for watching, guys.